real friend likes you for who you are, not what's on your face. If you judge your friends for passing judgment on you, you're not only judging yourself, you're judging your friends for judging you, and that would be using bad judgment. I never thought of it that way. The Brady Bunch was a weird, was a strange um, path for me. I mean, it didn't. When I first got it, um, you know, I got a script called The Brady Bunch and then an appointment, and I was like, kind of dumbfounded as to first of all, I hadn't read it. I said, "What are they doing? Are they going to do an episode and stretch it into two hours?" Then, uh, but when I heard about it, the, the, the significant thing to me was that Betty Thomas, <clears throat> pardon me, was directing the movie. And Betty, I knew a little bit, I had, she had directed an episode of a, a TV show I did called Midnight Caller years ago. And we got along good, and I, I, I saw her a few times after that. Um, because we, we had mutual friends, Jim Belushi, and she was she was hosting Saturday Night Live, and I saw her in New York in a little bit. And so I, I, I knew her a little bit. So I went into the meeting thinking, well, I'll get to see Betty and, you know, have a laugh, because Betty's always good for a laugh, you know. Not expecting it to, it just didn't make any sense to me. I didn't think, yeah, well, you're looking for Mike Brady? Well, here I am. I mean, isn't the choice obvious? Um, so I went in, and before I went in, I couldn't think of anything else to do except do Robert Reed. I can't imagine that's anybody would want to see anything else. That's why you're going to make this movie, apparently, to me, when you want to see people do impersonations of these actors. So I taped an episode, and I watched it, and I watched it, and I watched it, and I, I said, well, I don't, I'm not sure what he's doing, but the only real thing or, or the only specific thing that I can figure out is he does a weird he's got a weird rhythm so I went in and I did that for Betty and Betty she looks like this a lot in auditions she just is like she looks very puzzled all the time you know in a, in a meeting she just okay and I left you know and I said hey there's a picture a picture of my new daughter hey great 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 see you later bye uh, you know, weeks went by. So I figured it's, it's a dead issue. My wife runs into her, and she says, uh, "So Gary had a good time in the audition." She goes, "Yeah, he did. You know, he did pretty good. He did pretty good at that." And she said, "Well, who did you cast?" She said, "I don't. I, I haven't cast anybody. I can't find anybody to play this part." And so she left, and they, they split. And then I get a call a week later, come back and see Betty. I go back and do Betty, do the thing, and I'm getting the face again. Like, Oh, okay. I just wanted to see you again. Okay, I leave. You know, this went on a couple of times. Third time. Now Shelley Long's been cast. They say, we want you to go in with Shelley Long and read, but they want to see you in some kind of, in, looking like Mike Brady. But they provide nothing. So they, they hand me a, a wig that is like not fit. I look like Alfalfa, what's the guy? Buckwheat from Little Rascals. And I went down to Melrose and bought a really bad polyester shirt. And I went in and I read with Shelley. And I came back going, that was the strangest thing I've ever done in this business. I, I don't know what's going on. Had they given you any kind of indication that the, that the movie was going to be a parody? Or oh, sure. No, I mean, the, the script, I, the, 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 I love the script because the script was this, they were, they were stopped, they, they were caught in a time bubble. They were start, you know, they were in the 70s and everybody else was like looking at them like they were Frankenstein. So I didn't understand him. But anyway, I went in and did that, and then there was another couple of weeks of hiccuping, and maybe yes, maybe no, you know. And then finally, you know, I, I wound up, you know, in a bad wig and bad clothes, staring in the mirror and somebody knocking on the door going, five minutes, Gary, and I was going, my career is over. <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror going, because I, I had seen me in the wig, and I'd seen me in the clothes, but I hadn't seen it together. And I looked and I went, I'm done. I'm dead. I'm dead in the water. If this does, if nobody laughs at this, I, I'm, I might as well, pip, you know, pack and go back to Chicago. So, Those but speeches were unbelievable. The little, the little, you know, uh, homilies that right. you've given out. That was hysterical. Right. The moral lessons. The moral right. lessons. Well, basically, Betty and I arrived at the, the philosophy of if, if, if you have a section of your brain 
that's devoted to awareness of, of everything around you and, and the people around you, if you're playing Mike Brady, you remove that. And then you have your character, vacant, you know, good intentions, you know, the best of intentions, but clueless to everything.